I'm still trying to figure out if the primal wound created the primal scream, or is this rather demonic-looking character the direct visualization of our repressed childhood trauma and all the things that we'd rather not speak about? Well, I've studied over 600 psychology books with a focus on trauma healing and self-actualization in the last four years, and I can now say with confidence that these are two of the best self-healing resources that you've never heard about. And there's a sad reason for this. It doesn't take a genius or a mental health professional to reflect on today's very sad and very pathetic attempts at public mental health and how we're locked in this prescription, sedative, non-committal talk therapy kind of approach. But books like these from 1997 and 1991 with a therapy method going back to the 1970s, they give us an alternative timeline of what therapy could be. These two books give us a vision of holistic health at the highest levels of spiritual attainment and self-actualization and the deepest levels of repressed wounding, suffering, and the agonies which exist in our unconscious mind. We need both approaches because although Theo very rightly noticed the similarity in both of these books, I can say that they are rather different approaches to the question of human health and human healing. And this video is going to be a very wonderful exploration of two books. I strongly recommend that you go onto Amazon, hopefully and buy a second hand, but they might actually be sold out rather soon. I've already been receiving information from the comment section that some of the books I do recommend on this channel are no longer available. So if you want to get either of these, please buy them now. It's going to be well worth it. What are these books? Well, in a nutshell, they're two approaches to the human healing question at two different levels of intensity. Firstly, we have The New Primal Scream by Arthur Janov. Again, you can see that wonderful representation of what it's like to hold on to our trauma. And this is a book which explores the subconscious, lower unconscious somatic reality of trauma, wounding, and repressed pain. Arthur Janov was revolutionary in the 1970s for bringing about a new way of working with psychological material, which was actually rather shocking. I'm going to bring up a little 50 second or so video in a few minutes to show you what that looks like in an actual group therapy space. It's not the full story, but it's part of the story. This is us getting into the somatic lower reality, but of course, once we've gone into the lower realities, we'll then need to look at the upper realities, which is why we need a book like The Primal Wound by John Furman and Anne Giller, published in 1997, and taking us towards the transpersonal, which is the upper realms of human potential, but it's also the lower realms as well. It's a bit of a double bind, because if you watched these videos before, then you'll be very familiar with one of my favorite diagrams from the world of psychosynthesis showing the lower, middle, and upper unconscious. We don't need to go into that in too much detail right now, but we will return to it. Primal Wound and the new Primal Scream will offer you an ability to step outside of your everyday consciousness and go deep into the bodily reality and ascend all the way towards the spiritual reality without losing your footing in either. You won't be lost into completely cathartic, dissolving, horribly agonizing experiences, which for some people watching this video means very, very difficult and very upsetting experiences in their childhood, which we'd really rather not remember. And I hate that people go through these things, but we need therapies to be able to work with that kind of material. And we also need therapies like transpersonal psychology to go into the upper realms for people who have visionary experiences or mystical awakenings or spiritual awakenings of one form or another to work with archetypes and entities and thought forms and subpersonalities and the whole multiplicity of the psyche idea. We need both. They're quite different books. They may have the word primal in them, but let's go deeper into the distinctions. It seems like a good time before we go into some extracts from the primal wound. Not the primal wound. Difficult getting them mixed up. From the new primal scream. I'm going to show you a video. Let's put this on the screen. We'll watch it together. And this is a sample from a 1970s documentary over 50 years ago. And people in group therapy space, it's not the entirety of the primal screen method, which is actually primal therapy, not primal scream itself. There's some confusion there. Arthur Janov actually has issue with it himself, reflecting at the end of his career. 
but let's set the scene. This is what the group therapy space looks like, and if you notice connections to some of the modern breathwork practices, or bioenergetic movement workshops, or things like ecstatic dance, or gestalt therapy, it's because it all originated in that same melting pot in the 60s and the 70s where therapy was really getting very creative. Let's bring it up on the screen. This is a group session in primal therapy. The idea is to go back, uncover the hurts of childhood, relive them, and free the real you. What you see here, this happening, and you probably won't believe, happens every single day at the Primal Institute, almost every day in the year. We have groups every day. We have eight, nine, ten, twelve therapists working at a time, helping patients into their feelings. And as you can see, it's unlike any other group therapy known in the history of psychology. And it's based on a very simple idea, namely that people do not confront each other in group therapy. They confront themselves, the selves that are locked up inside of them. Rather dramatic scenes. I especially felt moved by the scene of the man on the floor reaching up towards his father or his mother. It's very much a classic gesture which we have deeply repressed as adults' ability to reach out and receive the support that we're longing for. It's such a deep space when you start working with somatic reality. But let's bring out a quote from Arthur Janov that kind of explains a bit of what you just saw. A quote from the book There is one neurosis. Hundreds of manifestations, but one basic cause, imprinted pain. And he goes into an example of manic depression. There's many different examples in this book of different types of illnesses, different types of symptomatic defenses. Let's go over the one example of what manic depression is from a primal therapy approach. Quote from the book. Manic depression is very much like what happens in the sleep cycle. First, there is a mind racing and an inability to fall asleep. Then, deep sleep, characterized by deep repression. Then, repression diminishes and one rises to the dream level, with agitation, thrashing about, and wild dreams. Manic depression has been a mystery, because its roots lie so far in the past, so unseen and unknown that heredity has seemed to be the only logical conclusion. The manic depression that I have seen have almost invariably had invariably had the kind of birth trauma that I have described. It is a reversible affliction. What an optimistic view of healing, rather than the modern idea that once you've got an issue, let's call it manic depression for the sake of labeling, once you have that symptom come up and you go to the doctor's office, you get hit with that label, and for the rest of your life you're going to be manic depressive. This is such a hopeful therapeutic approach. If you can hear the waste removal services, I suppose it's a bit of a frustrating thing for your ears, but definitely on theme that we're talking about waste removal. If you can hear the truck, I apologize. Arthur Janov is really going into a much more optimistic idea of tapping deep into the roots of disease, deep into the roots of depression, and deep into the roots of distortion to hopefully get us to a place where we directly confront and directly resolve all of that energetic baggage and tension. But he's also quite a controversial figure. In fact, his approach towards dream work is rather combative. And honestly, I think it's very much worth sharing because it shows the kind of character that Arthur was. He really knew how to push the limits. And yeah, I, I like it. But I'm going to read you a quote about what he thought about dream work very combative compared to conventional therapists. It follows from what I am saying that there can be no such thing in therapy as dream work. The endless analysis of dreams, it would be the same as the endless analysis of one's neurotic behavior, in the hope that the understanding will make the feelings go away, a patent impossibility. It's just manipulating symbols. Dream work is going through the motions of getting well without having to do it really. And that waste truck is screaming in the background. I hope that it's edited out, but maybe you'll hear the agonies of the garbage removal truck and we can symbolically weave that into the video somehow. Anyway, continuing the quote. It's another symbolic act out pref it's another symbolic act out preferred by heavily symbolizing individuals, 
key sentence, neurotics too often choose neurotic ways of trying to get well. And then he goes into a more nuanced example that significant dreams can come through, but basically taking an attack on the idea of talking around an issue or talking around an issue at a higher level of archetypal reality, but not getting core to the core of the deep emotional pain. So where does that leave us when it comes to the primal wound, which is very much a book about archetypal reality and going into the deep esoteric significance of symbols, subpersonalities, parts, images, and different impressions from the unconscious. Well, I truly do believe that one of the ways that you can actually heal yourself is to take opposing and complementary perspectives and weave them together. Although someone like Arthur Janov may be so strongly in the camp of physical somatic resolution, which is often very theatrical, very dramatic. If you remember from the clip, there are these people who are screaming and crying and trying to work through almost a re-dramatization of the trauma leaving their body. And I've gone through these experiences. I went through several years of my own embodied somatic therapy, mainly self-led, a couple of bioenergetic workshops in London, but mainly myself in the forest or even in this room, working through things in a tremoring movement-based manner. I'd breathe, I'd hyperventilate, I'd play with gesture. And it's something that I do with my clients. I Sometimes if I notice something, for example, a certain pattern with blinking or a tightness in the throat or a certain gesture that keeps getting repeated, maybe something like this or something like a closing gesture or something like a lean back gesture. If you're aware of the somatic therapeutic perspective, you can uncover the story behind the repetitive compulsive action. And if you can peel that back with sensitivity and intention and safety, you'll often get much deeper than the dream approach or the talk therapy approach alone. Talk therapy in the conversational sense of mainstream mental health will go around and around with the cognitive behavioral nonsense. I was going to say the word beginning with B and ending with T comes from a cow, comes at the rear end. I was going to say that. Let's call it nonsense rather than being too aggressive. I don't think it works. I don't think it works for deep pain. It doesn't work for people who've suffered abuse. It doesn't work for people who are very intense in their emotions and someone who may have something like manic depression or severe intense anxiety. Talking through it will get them a symptom relief, but it's it's not going to heal. Definitely won't heal. So elevating that towards the esoteric is not going to work either, even though a book like The Primal Wound is a fantastic take on Jungian ideas, archetypal ideas, and the mystical reality that we get to come into contact with as we self-actualize and spiritually individuate, it's not complete. In the same way that The Primal Wound and The Primal Scream are both representing different halves of the human spectrum, we'll return back to the diagram, the psychosynthesis diagram, um, first by Roberto Assayagoli in the 1910s. It's a model that we'll go into. In fact, this is another book that you can read by the same authors, Psychosynthesis by Anne Furman and John Giller. Really goes into the transpersonal model in great detail, but we'll come back to that. For the sake of simplicity, this is the diagram of your unconscious mind. Hopefully we're getting it in. There we go. You've got middle unconscious, lower unconscious, and upper unconscious with a central identity point and a variety of different directions to go in. I can't make a simple video, however, even though the logical thing to do right now is say that there is indeed the higher unconscious and the lower unconscious, I've started to realize through my work that those categories can become a little bit muddy. Archetypes can exist at different levels of unconscious repression, and so can energetic blockages. What does it mean, for example, if someone's coming in with a gesture of tightness around their throat? Maybe they're always, they're always gulping. We can work at one level with the deeply repressed energy of always gulping down the words that you wanted to say to your mother when you didn't want to go and eat the food that she was always demanding on you, or maybe the food itself it was always difficult. You're always force-fed always force-fed food that you didn't want to eat, or maybe there's a story from adolescence where you wanted to speak up and profess your love to someone that you had a crush on for five years, and you never did it, and now you can't express love. Or maybe as an adult, your feeling of low self-worth is expressed as the inability to ask for a raise at work. 
or maybe express displeasure and discomfort with your romantic partner's behavior. It all comes up as this gulping story. But what if it's actually more of a spiritual perspective? What if indeed it is your fifth chakra distortion and you want to go from a front chakra, back chakra, transpersonal perspective, the will element being the backside of the chakras, according to esoteric theory. If you don't believe in this, then treat it as a thought form, just a, a mental experiment. And the front being that direct outer expression and the distortions that run through your energetic bodies and the archetypal reality of the auric system. There's so many ways to deal with such a simple gesture like oh, gulping down the pain and constriction in the throat. A book like The Primal Wound primarily orients us towards the more cognitive and mystically abstract, which is essential work for someone who's creatively, intellectually, and empathically gifted, or at the very least above average. You won't be satisfied with just the somatic work. I certainly wasn't. It's fantastic to know that I can re-unlock this feeling of fluidity and safety. Uh, I remember the first time that I went to a bioenergetic workshop in London. Um, it was an ecstatic dance experience at the end. I didn't take my shirt off the first time I did it. I was in my early 20s. I was in a very athletic figure. I still looked pretty good by all standards, but I had shame about being topless because of a variety of chubbiness in my teen years and not quite feeling comfortable in my body. The second time I went to that workshop, I took my shirt off and danced with a few of the other shirtless men in a very safe, completely appropriate manner. And I shared at the end of that circle, it meant so much to me. I, I, I shared in about 40, 50 people. Anyone want to share anything? Sharing circles, you know how workshops go. And I said, yep, yeah, um, you may not believe it, but that's my first time feeling confident with my shirt off in public. And people laughed because they thought I was literally joking because I had a pretty good physique. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm serious. That's the first time. And I got this round of applause and it was very validating. It was that feeling of, mm, I needed a bit of group witnessing. And that's, that's all I needed at that moment. And then for years afterwards, I'm very happy, happy walking around shirtless and barefoot in public. That's the somatic reality alone. Taking this example towards a primal wound perspective, we might be looking at deeper archetypes of the warrior or the archetype of a bare-chested masculinity. Maybe we look at very barbarian-style images or very, like, caveman. Uh, Iron John has a good myth. It's a very classic man's myth book of the wild man in the woods. Maybe there's certain archetypal realities that I could also tap into to support the somatic, cathartic work. We can blend our healing in both approaches. And if you're still watching the video at this point, you can see just how far this approach is from giving you a prescription after a 15 minute meeting for your manic depression or anxiety or existential dread, and then giving you behavioral modification responses for when you're getting intrusive thoughts. It's just pathetic by comparison to how deep we could go. And it's a sad reality that we don't have enough mental health professionals who are trained across the board at great depth, because it's very difficult to do that. It takes years and years of effort and years and years of training. But it's a sad reality that you don't need to wait for. You can read books like these books and go into the archetypal and the higher, the somatic and the lower, and really get yourself much further along that healing journey by working from both ends at once. There are a few more books I want to recommend to you before closing off this video. They're very much complimentary books. You can read all of them. They're all going in the course I'm working on for release next year. I've read them all twice. I use them in my client sessions week in, week out. There's a reason I'm holding them up. Once more, we have Psychosynthesis by John Furman and Anne Giller. It talks about the psychosynthesis model. It's a great theory book. And if you want to go deep into the theory, I recommend reading The Synthetic Paradigm by Robert Aziz. Hopefully that came up right there. The Untrodden Path Between Freud and Jung, which isn't a small dirt road between their golden road to the unconscious and then maybe Freud's Victorian couch-lined kind of cobblestone street. It, it is a, a very, very dense theoretical exploration of the two theories of Freudian and Jungian analysis and very, very theoretically heavy. This is a very particular book. If you're interested in high, high level transpersonal theory, go for this book. There's nothing like it. it, it it's fantastic.
Let's make it more accessible then. We're going into the somatic work once more, leading from the new primal scream going backwards. We have the complementary work of Alexander Lowen and bioenergetics working about the same time in history, the voice of the body and the betrayal of the body. I've spoken about bioenergetics many times on this channel. It's all of the somatic, self-therapeutic, working through process. And these books will definitely help you with that. If you've already read Lowen and you're like Jordan, you keep recommending the same two books, I've got a new book for you. We've got Life Streams. An introduction to biosynthesis by David Boadella. I think that is how you say his name, but I cannot be sure. And this book is particularly fantastic because I believe that it has the most useful diagram that I've ever encountered in bioenergetic therapy. And it's this diagram. I'm not going to explain it, but if you're a nerd about these things, then pause the video and take this in. One of the best diagrams to understand all of the positions, the relationships between overcharged and undercharged, and oh, masterful book. If you read these books together, you're going to be in a position that is at least 50%, 60% more educated in regards to healing yourself from both ends of the spectrum. I truly hope that this video has been useful, and once more, although the primal wound and the primal scream sound very similar, uh, similar as Theo rightly pointed out, this is hopefully the video that clears things up and shows you just how wide the therapeutic space can be and how we need to go both deep and high, broad and narrow. If you're someone who has intense pain and intense aspiration, you better get yourself a therapy that works equally as intensive. This feels like a good moment to also highlight the fact that I have a pinned comment that describes how I do my mentorships over a four-month process. We're currently booked up. I work with no more than 20 people per year. It's an incredibly intense and incredibly personal one-to-one -one journey. And all the detail is right there in the comment. Reach out to me on Instagram with a voice note, ideally, if you're interested in this kind of transformative work. That's the end of the video. A new video is going to appear right over here. And we're going to talk about the same themes with even more words and even more books. I'll see you over there.